What we have here is an old vintage bell helmet. We've already flaked it out. We've put down a gold base first, silver flake, candy apple red. And um, before we did the candy apple red, we did six coats of clear, three, and then sanded down 600, then another three. And we got the clear on it, and we're starting to sand it down again before we do the graphics. And I've already done half of the helmet here, which has been sanded with 600. It's not completely 100% smooth, but that's all right uh, for what we're doing. And we're going to put the graphics on next, and I'm going to show the sanding, how I do it, the process. And that's where we're at. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, here I am. I'm 600ing this again the other side. That's not done. I went ahead and just made the other half of the helmet perfectly flat. And I'm doing this side here. And I just go back and forth. It's kind of monotonous and boring. I'm just, just showing this real briefly to... You know, show the example. I'm cross hatching everything, and they'll come back. I got a rubber squeegee, and I'll just kind of wipe off the excess. I'm using the foam here, so it doesn't damage the paint. Uh, it does get a little stinky after a while because of the water, and I had to periodically clean it. But it's great, you know, thing to have for um, doing the prep or even the wet sanding for buffing because it doesn't, you know, damage the paint and it's not harsh or abrasive. And it actually holds the, the item pretty good. And I'm just going to re-wet. I just keep doing this. It's, uh, like I said, boring. So we'll just kind of cut this off. And then I'll show the next stage with the masking. And getting ready to draw the graphics on, which I do by hand. I don't do a lot of vinyl cutting. And uh, there you go. <clears throat> Here's the helmet. It's all sanded out. And uh, you got the yellow tape around here. It's borderline because of the, the rubber trim that goes there. And plus, we want a little bit of spacing back from the edge for the graphic, which is going to be similar to this uh, around the edge here. And the next thing we do is get the, the mask on. I don't use... Uh, a bunch of yellow tape and actually use transfer tape from sign making and you know, I get these bigger sheets of it and I use that <clears throat> and the ideal is is to keep the amount of wrinkles that you get in it down and uh, so we're going to go ahead and get this spread on and keep it nice and even even though I got a wrinkle in it already. I got plastic squeegee. And just kind of start working it down. You're going to get some wrinkles. You're taking something flat and then going to something that's rounded. And it's just going to happen. Less sheets that you use, the better off. And of course, when you cut, you want a sharp exacto and you don't want to press too much into the paint job or else you start cutting into the clear too deep. And we'll cut it off there. And I'll come back with some more and we'll get the, the rest of it done. Then I'll show, show the next phase after this. About five minutes, I got all this done. You see the overlaps. Try to do minimal overlaps where the graphics are going. So did that. And now I'm gonna come use the yellow tape as a guide. This is line here is the, the dimension or the width of about one inch from the, this line here where I'm gonna do my graphics more, my cutouts and spray outs. So the next thing you do is to get this on. I can find the beginning, get the tape on, and that should just take a couple minutes and basically go around. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the, the cleaner, the, the easier. And 
And that's going to be, again, the border to what I got going on graphic wise. This area isn't going to be painted. And the problem with doing like helmets or anything that's shaped like this is that if you're trying to take something flat and put it onto something curved, you're ultimately going to get folds or, or bends in it. And then when you're doing a dimensional graphic with this, you're going to have to cheat it a little bit and just be patient and get your graphics to line up. And it's, it's a time consuming process and this isn't done quickly or overnight. Well, it can be if you want to pay for it. But uh, the next thing after I do this is I will measure out another one inch again from the center line, one inch up and go around and then my graphic will be contained in there. And that'll be the next little bit of the video is showing after I got all that laid out and cut out, um, you know, the that portion and then these panels will be after that doing the graphics on that. So we're gonna just cut it off here. I'll do all the monotonous stuff and then show, show that afterwards. That's it for now. Well, where we're at now is, is I've gotten the graphics drawn down on this side here. I've marked R for red. That means it's going to stay there when I pull all this after it gets cut. And how I'm doing it is, is that I've got the little paper triangle that goes around, the paper diamond that goes here. And that's try to keep me symmetrical as possible. And um, so I got this down, and I'll just keep repeating the process. Um, you know, eyeing it up, trying to keep it symmetrical. And it's basically that's where I'm at, and uh, I'll go through this, get this down. There's no reason to bore everybody with uh, watching me draw on this tape. And I get that down, then I'll come back and I'll mark it with a pen. And that's it. Uh, I'll show after I get all this done uh, what, the, what it looks like, but you can see it's starting to develop. And um, that's it. <clears throat> Now I got the, the helmet, half of it cut out so that you can see how this works. I put the R in there because I'm not exactly an aviation engineer, so uh, I have to have little things to remind me that this stays. And uh, so anyways, this is the way it looks cut out. It's a lot of work for a few minutes of spraying. And then over here, this side hasn't been done. Now the key to doing this is having a good sharp blade and you don't use a lot of pressure or else you end up cutting into it and I'll show you an example I just did it last night just me being impatient sometimes I get tired and just start you know trying to get more done than I should and you know just come and you kind of just cut the line I'll just pull this here and uh, I'm already getting off cue there and it just got to be patient and it takes time and uh, you know I've, I'll have at least an hour into cutting this stuff out and then I can pull this mask up very easy not to poke into the clear too much and uh, I'll pull that up and then I'll just keep going around all down here and then here and it gets a little bit more difficult when you get the uh, multi layers of the tape on there and you just gotta again be patient this blades brand new and nice and sharp so it should just kind of cut through it and after I get done doing all that get it sprayed they'll, they'll be here shortly get this all this sprayed and then pull the tape and then I've got a border line all the lines here and then I'm going to put an airbrush graphic in here something simple one color uh, it's already busy enough and let me show you the example of what happens if you get a little too much pressure right here I miscued my cut right right in here and then I came back and I cut there and then pulled the tape up and then pulled the paint up so I'll, I'll fix that it's supposed to look like this and it didn't but you know again I'd, I'll show you the mistakes because well, I make them all the time 
And a, a part of doing this is being able to fix the mistakes. As you can see, this is all cut out and we're gonna just go ahead and get this sprayed. Uh, we're gonna put a white base down on it first. And I'm not gonna put it real heavy. I'm just trying to tone down the red for the, the next color, which is gonna be gold. So, and the, the, the key to it is, is just not blow a lot of pressure into the tape so you're not blowing up and having blow by. And so that's where we're at. I'm just gonna get this done, get start getting some white on here. Nice and light, keeping the gun back a little bit. We got it turned up. All right, buddy. <clears throat> the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put some gold on, and we're using PBC 47 Gold Mine Pearl. It's a gorgeous color and uh, I'll get spraying on that. Again, just a couple coats, I'll get it started. And then uh, after the gold goes down, we'll start peeling the tape back. And then we'll do the SG-100. I won't shoot any video of that. It's no big deal, it's like an intercoat clear. And that protects the gold and the artwork uh, for the next thing when I do the airbrushing and the, the borderline pinstriping. Again, adjust my air pressure and go ahead and start spraying. Nice, light, even coat. What I'm doing now is, obviously I got the gold sprayed. I'm gonna start peeling the mask back, which I have down here around the edge. And I very gingerly just get this one started here in the corner. And just start peeling this back. And so I can get all this nice stuff away out of it, out of the picture here. And uh, and then we go to the next phase, which is putting the SG-100 on, which is a clear base coat. Um, it's an inner coat clear, and that's to cover up all this gold and protect the artwork there because I'm going to fix the remask. And after that, I'll show uh, uh, the cutting out of the artwork. <clears throat> now I've got the uh, outline taped. And this is the area I'm going to be airbrushing next. I want to cover all this up. So we're back to doing the mask again, but it's a little bit different. I don't have to worry about doing the whole helmet. I just got to worry about the area that I'm going to do the artwork on. So get this spread back out one more time. And then I come back and just basically leave leave the all the tape on as uh, going to be doing my graphics just in here again I'll be drawing directly to it and just like everything I do it tends to be hand done I don't get vinyl graphics I don't uh, do anything but what you're seeing and it's a little bit of a process it's slow I got my pencil and I can just you know whatever it is I can draw directly to it and I'll come back and I'll do the other side and after the, the graphics are on we'll start videoing again as I'm cutting out sections of it and airbrushing it all in but that's it for this portion you know do this side but I want to get this big hunk of junk out of the way and then we'll you know I can get into another video doing doing uh like doing the light box and uh replicating graphics for dimension or just different things and i'll touch on all of it at some point
And uh, let me get this done and then we'll start filming again when I've got the images on there. And uh, that's it. What we got here is this first side. I went ahead and got this all cut out, ready to go. Did the airbrushing in with the motorcycle and the plane. And uh, did the border lining right here. I'm fixing to put two lines in here and this is my guide. But what I want to do right now is go back over to this side and start getting this graphic airbrushed out and doing that process. This way you can see how I do it. And uh, we're going to go from there. I'm going to cover up the other side so that we don't get any overspray on it. Doesn't make sense to do that when I can simply do it. And I'll get this on here. Don't have to be all precise or anything. It's just got to cover. Tape doesn't want to stick too good. Make sure we got that down nice. Now I'll come in and I think I will start with the motorcycle first. And got a nice sharp X Acto. And start cutting the stuff out. I'll pick out the portions that are going to be the darkest first. And then I'll start working out from there. And Basically, that's all I'm doing. I'm doing black, which is over here, by the way. I've got, I'm using the house color black, this reducer, and I over reduce it so it's thin on the airbrush. Because what we're trying to do is have it transparent enough where some of the flake will still kind of pop up through uh, the black. And I mix it in a little film jar right here. You know, there's no reason to mix a whole bunch of it up and uh, that way it's also contained and I can preserve it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. You don't want to cut too deep and cut into the, the paint. It's been clear coated. So, and then 600 down again, which I already did earlier in the video. And uh, I'm just kind of trying to figure out what I want to do exactly here, where I'm going to start. And I think I'm going to start on the tire and get up here front and I just cut it just push it down enough I can after a while you get used to the feel of the the knife and how deep you're going and I still make mistakes and uh, the more you do stuff the more you're going to make mistakes obviously I, periodically I do cut a little deep as whether I'm rushing or stuff but I always try to be relaxed which is almost impossible in my world it seems anymore and uh, just do things at a casual pace you know the whole point of me doing this stuff is I enjoy it and uh, when I don't enjoy it or I feel like I'm not just enjoying things in general I don't like to do them so that's my spiel I'm sticking to it and I'm gonna get this back here section done and Concentrating a little bit. There's no point in trying to cut over the same line twice. Just gently get this mask up. A little piece of tire down here. You know, one of the things I do is I tend to cut in a, in a manner with the, the knife where I'm pulling it towards me a lot. And that's just for uh, control. You know, try to keep everything smooth and the, the motion continuous. Um, but sometimes you just, uh, it doesn't, you know, you don't do it that way. And yeah, there's that. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and do this blimp here real quick. Get a couple pieces this way when I'm doing the airbrush I'm doing a, a bunch of stuff at the same time and it just kind of helps speed the process up and keep consistent in everything I'm doing that's on a fold here so I might have a go back just a little bit harder get that out that's not going to get cut good enough so I guess I'll 
go over that again. Like I said, try not to go over the lines twice. There's no point. But here's a prime example of doing it twice. Get that cleared out. Get this right here. Over another fold. That's on a fold there again. that to get with that for a second and I'll get this airbrush going. <laughs> dark but I want it dark. And it always looks a little bit darker the first round and, and as it dries up the reducer uh, evaporates it will you know lighten up and then I kind of look at it again decide if I'm going to do more or not. Kind of hitting the edges. I'll just go over the whole thing just a little bit. Back here. Just kind of hitting the edges here. Then I'm going to make this just a pinch darker. I'll just come up here and look at that and just kind of hit the edges one more time. Try to get create detail and not wash out or completely black out what we got going on there because the flakes popping through. And right there, you can see where in the light it's kind of already faded down a little bit. And I'll just hit the edges again. That's how we began, and I'll go through and start doing some more of this, and um, we'll come back and we'll look at the, uh, how the rest of it is, and I'll finish up some freehand detail and do the, the spotlights here on the blimp, and uh, there we go for right now, and uh, that's it. So the shadow right here, get this done, hidden edges. That's going to be a little bit darker than the top side. A goggle piece right there. Number two. Get that. I'm just going to get the whole thing. Handle. Piece of shadow. Another piece of shadow right here. Part of the, the strut. Or the, excuse me, the axle there. And then this is more shadow darker area back in the back, darker area back in the back here, right here, another piece right there, the motorcycle seat right here, the strut right there, and that's that portion, I'll cut some more out and then get more filled in. It's pretty much finished up there, and now I'm doing the rays here, the, or I should say the spotlights, and getting them all tidied up and basically doing the same thing just going along the edges filling it in that's necessary 
not trying to get too crazy. Do that. Get that out of the way. Come in, just cut that out. It's not a very hard thing to do here. The next thing we're going to do is cut all this out so we can put a shadow on it that makes it look like it's sunk more down in and then peel all the tape and uh, that's what we'll get started on here and that's it. That's where we're at and got that whole piece cut out and that's the way it looks. I'm going to add some effect to it to make it look like uh, we'll say motion it's moving but I'm going to go ahead and hit these edges get the get it where it's basically a drop shadow is what I'm trying to get at and uh, here we go Just kind of trying to even everything out so it looks, you know, good and consistent. thing we'll do is uh, I guess say put the speed on this guy That's it. On, uh, this portion here, we're going to go ahead and do the border lining. 
to get the image some pop. I already did some over here. Uh, did this side, it's already kind of completed other than the tape, which is gonna be my guideline. I'm gonna have two thin little black stripes that I will do right here and through the center. But what I'm using is, is I'm using the House of Color pinstripe paint. The reason I use that is, is that I can get to clear quicker. And, uh, but I actually do like the one shot better. It tends to lay down smoother. I can get good smooth lines out of the, the House of Color, but it's a little bit more effort. And uh, I got in this little container here, the UOO uh, reducer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get my brush primed up and uh, using the magazine here, get it where I want it. It's a little loose right now, right even out of the can. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and run a line down, make sure I get it where I want it, get this brush where I want it. And uh, believe it or not, I'm not very smart. I used the wrong brush. So the brush I'm using, this is the right brush. The brush I'm using is the Mac Virus. This is a small one. I grabbed the, the bigger one, wasn't paying attention. And uh, there we go. Now it lines a lot better. And I like it because I can be thin. I'm comfortable with it. I'm not going to say it's the best uh, outliner brush, but I'm comfortable with it. And that's really what it comes down to. I'll spend all day doing this if I have to. So. Anyways, I will start at a point in this, the beginning, right in here. Just kind of lay the line down. I'm just doing the outline, taking the edge off, smoothing every any of my razor cuts out, straightening them up, getting the image to pop. And I will continue to do this all the way through. There's a lot of lines on this, so this does take time. And the one thing I like to do is I like to pull the brush towards, pull the brush and not so much in one direction. That way I get consistent and smooth. Just run a little bit of paint in there. Put that on there real quick. And then I will start on this one. The big long line. on the brush that's the problem with this brush in particular it doesn't hold a lot of material but again I'm comfortable with it and I'll take the time I'm in no rush the finished helmet and uh, nice and flaky got the clear on it put a little bit of light and see how the flake is with the images and uh, kind of turn it around here gets a better light on it and we've got the stripes down the middle all the border lines done and this guy here with the uh, racing and uh, got the rubber trim on it, and it's pretty much finished up. And then we're going to move into the next project, and uh, that's it for now.